Hello, Veronica. It's Mr. Sean again, here to read another science story to you. Hope things are going well for you and your family. I'm doing well. I'm still working at home. So, hope you're doing good. So, here's the story. Today's story is matter. We've talked about matter in other stories, so now we're going to find out specifically about matter. Something you can see, feel, touch, taste, and smell is made of matter. The air is made of matter. Raindrops are made of matter. You are made of matter. Matter is everywhere. That is true. It is everywhere. Everything you see is made of matter, even though you may not be able to see it easily, like in the air. Some matter is loose. It moves smoothly. It can be poured. It can flow from one container into another. Its shape changes to match the shape of the container it is in. This kind of matter is called a liquid. Water, juice, and honey are liquids. Remember we talked about liquids at one point? So they don't, they hold the shape of the thing that they're in. So this juice is in this glass. So it takes the shape of the glass or the honey. It's poured into the bowl. So it takes the shape of the bowl. And the rain drop isn't contained by anything except on the bottom, maybe the street or sidewalk, so it just flattens out, finds its own shape. Some matter is firm and sturdy. It has its own shape. This kind of matter is called a solid. You are a solid. Your chair is a solid. A rock is a solid. So why do we remember what we, why we called those solids? Because they hold their own shape, remember? So you hold your own shape. You don't get all loose and f become a puddle of stuff. No, because you have bones inside you and muscles and skin and other things that keep you together. And this chair is made up of solids, the plastics and maybe some steel. And then this rock or stone is a solid because it keeps its own shape. Some matter can fill a space of any shape or size. You can walk through this matter and not see it or feel it. This kind of matter is called a gas. Air is a gas. Your breath is a gas. The bubbles in soda are a gas. Yeah, can you see the wind? Oof, that's what these little lines are depicting. And then the air you breathe is a gas inside. You blow into the balloon. And then the fizz. I believe that's, what is that? Is that carbon dioxide? I can't remember what we call the fizz. That's a, a gas that's injected into the pop. Remember certain places called soda or uh, soda is we call pop in other areas of the country it's called soda remember or a soft drink sometimes matter can change from one kind of matter into another water is one kind of matter that can change forms water that is not too cold or too hot is a liquid water that gets very cold turns into ice Ice is a solid. Water that gets very hot turns into steam. Steam is a gas. Now with water, it's easier to see because it changes temperatures or changes form in temperatures that are easily accessible to us, which means we can make it colder or hotter. So our refrigerator, we can make ice cubes or it gets cold outside here in Michigan that makes snow and ice. So the water freezes, becomes a solid. Or if you heat the water on the stove or in a microwave, it becomes steam. It's that white stuff that comes off of the top. If you 
keep the heat on a long time, all the water will turn into steam and you won't have any solid water like this or liquid water anymore. It'll all be gone. So that might be something you could test at home, maybe <clears throat> with your mom or your big sister. Try that. Measure some water in a pan and let it boil for a while. And then measure it again to see how much of the water became steam and went away, went into the air. Scientists use microscopes and do experiments to learn about matter. They study all kinds of solids, liquids, and gases. What would you like to know about matter? I don't know. If you think about that for a little while. All right, Veronica, I hope you enjoyed learning about matter. Until next time, bye-bye.